For Creamer Media's Policy, I'm Sashni Madli. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satner joins me for Satner's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Now, we're going to speak Zimbabwe today. With a new leader at the helm of the country, what are the country's prospects? You know, uh, everyone would love things to go well in Zimbabwe because it's had 37 years under the helm of Mugabe. It wasn't always bad, by the way. It had made incredible advances educationally, and he was not always as authoritarian as he became later. In fact, I, le I met him in 1989 uh, when I was skipping my house arrest. Uh, I was out of the country illegally, and he said to me at the Harare Declaration meeting, I hear one of you are going to be with us for a bit longer. And he goes like this as if I'm a naughty schoolboy, you know. And um, so he was sort of had a kindly image. Uh, but I think we have to understand that the Zimbabwean liberation movement, ZANU, which split from ZAPU mm -hmm. in early 60s or late 50s, uh, from the period of armed struggle was not as, as well developed politically as the ANC was. Uh, I always used to say the ANC is not going to go the way of ZANU because the ANC has always had, a, had this long history, much longer than the Zimbabwean liberation movements, where it's drawn lessons, where it's uh, argued politically, mm. things like that. Well, you know, when you look at today, maybe I was not so correct um, in saying the way the NC would go. But I think what is true is that the Zimbabwean liberation forces were actually very successful, especially ZANU, mm. com comparatively speaking, in military terms. Uh, and I think that it has infused the way politics have, has been run in Zimbabwe, that the veterans, as well as the military itself, have come to play a very important role in Zimbabwean politics, and that role has not been democratic. Mm. Um, and we've seen this particularly from the period of the rise of the MDC, initially a trade union movement which developed into a political party and won elections uh, and then got cheated out of elections. And the cheating out of the elections was actually uh, the army, the military, played a key role in doing that. And Mnangagwa, the uh, new president, has always been very close to security and the military. He himself comes from the armed struggle. And uh, so everything that was done to defend Mugabe's rule, like rigging of elections, uh, removing informal settlements where people were seen as opposition force supporting MDC, all of these things have been spearheaded by the military. Mm. Well, you also had a situation where some of these military people, I think one of them has been made a minister now, yes. said that where if uh, Tsang Varai were to become president, he would not salute him. They would only recognize a leader of Zimbabwe who, if that person came from the liberation movement. Mm. So you've had this situation, and with the fall of Mugabe, a lot of people hoped that we would see a new dawn, mm. a rebirth of the vibrancy of the early years, what, what looked like vibrancy in Zimbabwe. But even though um, Mugabe had dismissed Mnangagwa as vice president a few weeks before the military stepped in, um, they came from the same cloth. They were the same type. The political orientations 
very similar. Mm. And uh, consequently, and in fact, Nangagwa says that Mugabe is his mentor, all this sort of thing. And he's not a very popular figure. In other words, I'm meaning in a very, very basic sense, twice he has not succeeded in being elected as an MP mm. and he had been nominated by Mugabe. So you're talking about someone whose power base is not so much the population, even in the narrow sense of getting votes in an election. It's the military, it's security. You also have a problem about the prospects for the future insofar as there is division in the security forces. Um, the police were perceived as being more supportive of the G40 group, which was associated with Grace Mugabe and her allies, and the military more uh, closely associated with Mnangagwa. So we've got a situation where A, the military calls the shots in ZANU-PF, uh, recognizing the leadership of the new president of ZANU-PF, um, Mnangagwa. Um, you don't have a vibrant party life, like you don't in South Africa either, mm. where there's not a lot of debate, uh, there's nothing much debated mm. in ZANU-PF. Every now and again, there's someone saying, take some land and things like that. But apart from that, there's not a great deal of debate going on. The opposition parties are split. Uh, parliamentary opposition parties are split. And secondly, um, uh, Tsang Varai is himself very sick and may not be able to stand for the presidency, mm -hmm. even if they united against him, uh, with him in 2018. Uh, the other problem you've got is that, in my view, to have democratic politics, you need to look beyond the formal politics of parliamentary politics, the state, and things like that. And um, there's very high unemployment, homelessness, and it's an illusion to think that people are being dissatisfied Nestle transforms into a powerful political force. Mm. Because if you want to create a powerful political force, you've got to have resources for people to be able to meet, to travel to one another, and be together with food and things like that. Things are very dire in Zimbabwe. So the prospects for democracy are not uh, much better, although I think that when you remove Mugabe and you get a new leader, uh, first of all, the new leader's self-esteem may lead him to uh, decide that he will show that he is different from Mugabe. Mm. It may be better for business than it is for, uh, was under Mugabe, but in terms of democracy, I doubt it. But just going back to um, Mugabe and Nangagwa, yeah. uh, recently the cabinet was the new cabinet yes. was sworn in, and he brought back people from Mugabe's administration. So should we be concerned about this? Well, he brought back some people. He didn't bring back people who were associated with the Grace Mugabe group. No, he brought that. That reinforces the view that there's not much difference between the two, except it may be more militarized because he's brought in two or three generals. Uh, one of them uh, had, was the one who said that he will not salute, he will not recognize mm. Tsang Varai as a... So you've got a, a military man and a minister who basically will not recognize the results of any future election. So the fact that they are from Mugabe is one thing, but it's worsened by the military the greater presence, of an already great presence of the military. Mm. So do you think the military is going to be a problem for Zimbabwe? Well, it's been a problem before uh, in the sense they are the face of uh, repression. And um, 
the security, other security forces as well. Uh, but w in the case of Nagua, his security base is mainly the military, and they have been involved in uh, land seizures, a number of things, and some of them have got land themselves. Mm. So it will be a problem, not just in terms of repression, but also whether there is going to be a stop to land seizures of a type that do not benefit the people as a whole and uh, uh, drive down the production of agriculture as it has been over the last couple of decades. Mm. Now lastly, one analysis on Zimbabwe said that um, Nangagwa's cabinet choice reveals patronage and rewards to the military. Is that fair? So. Oh yes, no, no, I mean, patronage, I should have said, is a given in the sense that the, the G40 group, Grace Mugabe, was a patronage group where uh, everyone steered things to one another and Grace Mugabe is still trying to uh, continue with what she calls legacy projects, a mm. number of other things on farms that have been seized and things like that. So when you support one person rather than another, whether it's now the military or whatever it is in his cabinet, those people expect to benefit. Mm. Just like the former Minister of Finance, who is now on charges of corruption, uh, was benefiting under the previous government, uh, benefiting even more than they may have known in terms of the alleged corruption. So I do think that patronage, but also corruption, will continue. I'm not saying it'll be worse, but will definitely continue because that is the basis when you say there is a support base, the support base f is not related to any specific ideology like in South Africa. Mm. It's re related to who looks after whom. Thanks for speaking with us, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Satner speaking to Kruma Media's policy about freedom in Zimbabwe.